Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 693. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, I have a special bear market report because yes, we did cross into bear market territory. That is where the stock market has declined by 20% or more. And this happens from time to time. It means that the longest running bull market in history that was going for 11 years straight has ended, which doesn't mean that we're into an extended period of time in this bear market. I happen to think otherwise, but I'll be sharing all of my perspective with you today on this podcast. Now, from the last podcast where I talked about how we were looking like it was more likely we would be having a recession, I think that is exactly why the market has reacted the way that it has. As I was saying in that podcast, we've had three definite legs down. First, we had the supply chain question. We didn't know how long the supply chain was going to be interrupted from China. We didn't know who wasn't going to get parts to be able to manufacture. We didn't know how long it was going to last. There were a lot of unknowns in the supply chain portion of the decline. Then we got hit with the battle between OPEC and Russia, with wanting to open the spigots and crash the market of oil and make the per barrel price of oil drop into the 30s and possibly even below, maybe even into the 20s. They still are at it. And we had another round of it last night. And the third leg down was from understanding that all of the news hadn't been priced in the market yet, that with the cancellations and closures and delays, of major events, large group gatherings, travel, etc., that this would have a possible recessionary effect on the U.S. market. Now, what's really interesting is I was able to poll my clients who live all over the U.S., and also I have many international clients, but particularly the U.S. clients responded that they're not seeing a lot of impact in their economies. That is, they are noticing people are out shopping, they're out in restaurants, they are traveling, they were saying that planes were full. I mean, the reports that I got back were really astounding and much, much better than I would have expected. Now, I'm not commenting on whether this is the right action to take or not. My point really is that a lot of the economy is still strong because many people are continuing in their purchasing activities, in their daily activities of going here or there. There definitely are some cities that have been hurt harder than others. Some of my friends in San Francisco are telling me how hard that area has been hit and Santa Clara area. And also in Washington state, there are pockets where there definitely is a slowdown in the economy and more of just a shutdown of the entire area. We have also had more states come out and declare a state of emergency. So I think we're going to continue to see large groups being canceled, and that's the prudent thing to do to make sure that this doesn't spread more. But ultimately, what I'm seeing is that the economy, in terms of numbers and the GDP, doesn't look like it's going to be as bad as what the market is pricing in. To me, this was a very fast drop, very different from 2008 or from 2000 or even 1929. Those happen mainly from overvaluation and bubbles. They're the types of pullbacks that everyone's invested and the valuations became ridiculously high. This pullback isn't like that because This was a very reluctant bull market. This is the bull market that Martin Armstrong and others have called the most hated bull market. 
That's because it kept going up and people wanted it to come down so they could get in and buy or they just thought it couldn't keep going and it just kept going and going and going. So to me, this is more of a panic drop. It's a sharp, fast drop that's unexpected. That's from a temporary event. As the president said last night, this is a moment in time. It's a temporary situation. This is not an economic situation in the way that the housing crisis was in 2008. But even from that crisis, from the low point in 2009, the market rebounded 500%. What I know is that when markets get too one-sided, when they get too negative, when they go down too far too fast, there is a reaction that comes on the other side that is as powerful. And I think that eventually this market is going to reverse and move up. I was commenting yesterday that the World Health Organization came out and named this a global pandemic, which we all knew and in the news was the market being down 20% and officially being called a bear market. To me, those were two confirmations that we were very near the point of maximum pessimism. And whether it is today, Thursday, or whether it's tomorrow or within the week, I think we are very close to that point and close to getting a very strong reversal. And that means lots of opportunity. We haven't had a lot of good news in this market, so any surprise of good news could really cause a sharp rebound up because it would cause all of the shorts, the people who are betting the market is going down, to cover their positions. And that means they have to buy back into the market at whatever price. They just have to get shares. They have to close out their short position. And that means that the market can go higher and higher and higher as those shorts are buying at any price. The president was just on television and said, quote, the stock market will bounce back. It will bounce back big at the right time. Now, we haven't talked about what's called the plunge protection team, but it is a team that President Reagan installed in 1988 after the crash of 1987, which was down 23% in one day, President Reagan installed a team that could go in and buy stock market futures to make the stock market go up. President Trump has these tools at his fingertips, and he knows that he has those tools at his fingertips. He also has some other options available at his fingertips that will make the stock market go up. And I think he's very aware of that. And I think in that statement, it was almost a hint that that's what is going to happen. Whether you voted for the president or not, one thing we can all agree on. Every time he did a rally, he talked about the stock market being at a new high or being up so much more than it was when he initially became president. He's very prideful of the stock market. He's very attached to the stock market. Do you really think when he has these tools available to him that he's going to allow the stock market to stay in a bear market, especially in an election year? I don't think so. So here's my advice for you. Number one, make sure you're properly diversified. Use all of the asset allocation model that is available, which is small companies, medium-sized companies, large companies, international emerging markets, bonds, and some sectors that you like. Oftentimes, in a recessionary type environment, smaller business can often do better, and small caps can outperform large caps at that time. That's because small business doesn't have a lot of people to lay off. They're lean and mean. They can turn on a dime. They can go a different direction. They can reduce their inventory. They can reduce their costs quickly. There's a lot of things that small business can do just because of flexibility. And if the president extends low interest rate loans to them, that's a very good thing. And that will definitely help small businesses. And it might mean that small caps, small companies do better. So make sure you're properly diversified across all of the asset classes. Number two, make sure to keep a long-term time horizon. If you are considering this a buying opportunity, it shouldn't be for any gambles or bets or one-way directions. It should be for long-term investing, and you should have at least a five-year time horizon if you're going to be investing in the stock market. 
You should also look ahead six months and keep your perspective on what I've said is coming in the second half of the year. There's a lot of trade deals and things that are not quite priced in yet that will be coming in to lift the GDP in the second half of the year. So while I don't know where the exact bottom is or what exact time it's going to happen, I can say we are close to that point of maximum pessimism. Whether it's today, tomorrow, or next week, I don't know, but we are very close. As always, check with your financial advisor and don't consider what I'm saying here financial advice or advice to you specifically. Take your situation under advisement and do what's right for you. But remember, we do have pullbacks of 20% roughly every 10 years. So here we are in the 11th year, it's pretty close to being on time. These things don't last forever. In hindsight, they can be great buying opportunities. When you look at the chart, you look at that point where there was a decline like this, sharp, steep, quick, and it usually bounces back from there and continues on higher. I think for long-term investors, this is an incredible opportunity. So that's my bear market report. I'm putting this out a day early. This will replace my Friday podcast unless there is a reason that I wanna come in and give you an update on Friday. But I came in a day early because I really wanted to just get all this information to you, give you my perspective, and share with you what's happening. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit that subscribe button and you'll be notified as soon as new podcasts are available. And don't forget, we still have our review contest going for a few more days. There are 25 prizes being given away, 10 of my Wealthy Mindset Blueprint audio sets valued at $197, 10 of my Wealth Heiress books named one of the all-time best wealth books by Book Authority, and five one-on-one wealth mentoring sessions with me. All you need to do is leave a podcast review That'll get your name in the drawing one time. And if you've read the Wealth Heiress book and leave a book review, that will get your name in the drawing two times. And winners will be announced in mid-March. We're getting right down to it, so be sure to get your review in and you have a really good chance of winning. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.